Hey minions, welcome to Crank It Up. I'm Jim Price, and on this episode of King of the Hill, I'm going to be talking about the princesses, all of them. The princesses are unique in that they have no traditional king minion, but rather six minions of five power each. Each princess has a different power, making them versatile, but the lack of overall minions can make them harder to play. I actually really enjoyed this faction, and have from the very beginning, even before they had many synergies. So how do the different minions compare? This is going to be difficult because each situation calls for a different princess, so I'll be approaching the problem from an angle of general consistency and utility. Anytime I have to rank things, I'll rank them two or three times several days apart to make sure that I get consistent results without looking at the previous ordering. I've come up with the same ordering three times so I feel good about the results. So here they are in my personal ordering starting with number 6, Griselda. Griselda has a talent that lets her put an heirloom from the discard pile into your hand. The heirloom is an interesting action that increases exponentially in power with each copy, up to 9 power total, and it cannot be destroyed. While this is a useful card, it takes time to build up. For Griselda to be effective, you need to have used at least one heirloom already, and that is completely dependent on the order in which your cards are drawn. If you draw Griselda, but no heirlooms, she is probably a regular minion and you never use her ability. If you draw your heirlooms early, use them liberally, and then draw Griselda, obviously this is a much different story. But without support from another faction, the princesses cannot play more than one heirloom per turn, so Griselda needs time and opportunity to maximize her value. I believe her to be the most inconsistent despite liking her ability. Number 5 is Apricot, who has a talent to destroy an opponent's minion of power 2 or less at the same base. Destroying a minion is usually a good ability, but the geographic restriction hurts her effectiveness because you'll want to save the princess movements for better plays. To a lesser extent, the restriction that it must be in an opponent's minion hurts on VP farming bases, although the princesses have no minions themselves that qualify. It's still better to have the option as there are times that call for it. Her ability is slightly redundant with Skillet, which has no geographic or controller restriction and lets you draw a card. The fact that Apricot is number 5 isn't indicative of her potential, but rather a statement about everyone else's. Number 4 is Marie de Gras. The major princess weakness is that they are minion starved, and Marie can help with that. This card is designed to filter through your deck until you get to the minion you need. Her talent is a great one to play prior to your minion play, hoping you get what you need. However, the drawback is that the action goes to the bottom of your discard pile. This helps with getting to your minions faster, but you may inadvertently bury a strong princess action as a result. Fortunately, the princesses have some shuffling opportunities that can undo this, such as direct to DVD sequel. When you're hurting for minions, Marie can help you recover. Number 3 is Sleeping Beauty, the Perpetual Princess. The only way to get Sleeping Beauty into your discard pile is to cancel its ability or have it be discarded from your hand. Otherwise, Sleeping Beauty will get shuffled back into your deck, also undoing the harm of Marie de Gras, and give you another minion to play. This is my go-to minion when I need a minion just for power, not worrying about its ability or long-term value, because the ability to get her back is her long-term value. I have played Sleeping Beauty three times in one game simply by drawing her, independent of any deck manipulation, and I find extreme value in increasing my chances of finding a minion. Some players may think that this is a high ranking for Sleeping Beauty, but as someone who plays the princesses all the time, I find her reliability to be extremely valuable. Number 2 is Snow White, a minion that I use as a magnet constantly. Her talent lets you move a minion from another base to here. Going in both directions would be too powerful, but she may not need the extra boost. One of my favorite bases to play her is Mushroom Kingdom. At the start of your turn, you can pull one of their minions, then one of your minions and break the base quickly for 5 points. Or you could terraform it. Snow White is great on ninja style bases where you want second place. You can pull all of their good minions to the undesirable base. Snow White works extremely well on Ice Castle. Use True Love's Kiss to move Snow White there, 
then periodically pull your other minions over for an easy 3 points. Make one of them Sleeping Beauty and you'll eventually get your minion back anyway. Play her with high ground and let the destruction begin. There are a lot of ways to use Snow White, all of them useful. So if you're following along, there's only one option left for number one. And not only is this minion my number one princess, I'd be tempted to take this minion number one overall from all king minions. That princess is Eliza, with the I'm going ability that other players cannot play more than one extra card per turn. This card single-handedly shuts down entire factions, robots, wizards, halflings, any factions that play a lot of cards per turn. Sometimes I will move Eliza to Ice Castle where it's very hard to get rid of her. The base is hard to break and minions are hard to play there. Eliza does have some weaknesses which have increased as the game has gone on. Titans explicitly say that they do not count as extra cards when played so Eliza cannot block them. Her other weakness is that her ability ends the moment she is removed from play. So if a player were out of extra card plays, something like Abduction would unblock the minion you get to play as a result. Expect Eliza to be a significant target for all players, so you might want to dock her on Beautiful Castle so that she is protected from most abilities. It's worth noting that some cards, such as Last Call, do not specifically mention the word extra. However, Eliza still blocks them because extra is any card that is outside your regular minion or action. There are so many opportunities where Eliza really shines, and while she may not do anything to factions without extra plays, she alone destroys those who do, and that's what makes her my number one. I love the versatility of the princesses, and they work great with superheroes because you can get exactly the minion you need for the right situation. How would you rank the princesses? Let me know in the comments. That's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Let's shut it down.